Well, listen, welcome back, the waves. So it's been a while. 16 years is a long time to wait. I don't know what the heck was wrong with us. 16 years, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm surprised. I think it was, like... was it Taj Mahal who was on the show the last time? Is that right? It was. And yeah. uh, there was a bit of a story because there were some prawns downstairs. Do you remember? You're going to you, tell this story? You ate the last of the, the prawns. I, the right. I ate the last <laughs> coconut crusted shrimp at the after party and I was in bed, well, between the bed and the bathroom for the next two days. <laughs> And at the end of it, there was a piece of undigested shrimp oh, that came out. <laughs> and that was, that was the culprit. <laughs> That's why we haven't been back for so long. So, <laughs> but see, we're just, we're happy that you ate it and Taj didn't eat it. That, that's what we said. We yeah. saved him. It was like that a was sacrificial yeah. nibble. Thank you. <laughs> Anytime. Yeah. It's always good to know the backstory that we don't hear. The things that happen that... that uh, after, after the artists leave, you know. <laughs> um, anyway, I, uh, s sorry about Donna, and we wish her a speedy recovery. And, yeah. uh, and so this must be weird for you guys because you've been so tight. This trio thing has been going on for 27 years now. Yeah, and there's a, there's an, a tonal and an oral balance that's sort of yeah. off kilter. I mean, Josh is doing a wonderful job. He's stepping up because usually he has to fight to sing songs because Donna and I are always battling it out on the microphone. Yeah. So he sort of gains from this because he gets to play songs and sings that, uh, well. well, not gain, but, you know, you get to play and <laughs> sing stuff that I'm generally... I'm just being the sacrificial <laughs> guy again. <laughs> It sounds, it sounds really good. And I have to say, it was a lovely vibe. Your first, the title song has this sort of lovely, kind of classic, almost a Cat Stevens kind of feel to it. But um, we'll talk about the recording in, in a little bit. Um, I just want to catch up a little. Now, Vicky, I know you lived in the States for a while, right? For yeah, quite a while. I became a US citizen. I've lived oh, yeah. in Southern Utah for 11 years. Was that a hard process to go through the whole immigration <laughs> thing and learn about American history and all its glory? Oh, yeah, you have to, you have to know... A hundred questions, and so I studied the book and I knew the answer to, to everything, and then they asked me the most basic questions, like, um, you know, what's, what's... How what's, do you spell united? Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> literally, there was a spelling, yeah, the, the most basic things, and uh, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't too bad. I didn't feel too under fire. Um, obviously, my grandfather was, was American, so I sort of, yeah. you know... You got a, an alley-oop from that, you got yeah. a lift, yeah. Well, you know, the immigration process, we hear a lot about it these days, but yes. yours is clearly an example of it working well, and well, you're an upstanding citizen. Me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, and what about kids? I see kids in your, in your music videos. Are they your oh, kids, yeah. other kids? That's always a bad idea in retrospect. When yeah. you look back at your mu music videos, you know, you're a power parent. You say, oh, can I have my baby in the video? But looking back on the video, I wish we didn't have the children in the video. <laughs> but... Uh, actually, I think I had Donna's kids, or we might have even had a ring-in child in one of those because our kids weren't <laughs> available. So what was the question? The question was, do you have any children? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funnily enough, Donna and I had uh, three boys each. Yeah, wow. And uh, we actually we were on tour in the States, heavily pregnant. We were both about seven months pregnant, and p we would walk on stage and the audience would burst into laughter. They thought it was hilarious. We, there's a funny story where we, we were actually due on the same day. Wow. So when you sort of figure it out, you know, women, moon, cycles of the moon, we live together. We figured there must have been a night off on tour and yeah. our, our husbands were around and <laughs> it all happened serendipitously. What, yeah. Once again, a little more information than we than all we bargained needed. for. Yes, sorry. Yeah. yeah. This is good. Good. It's sort of a, it's an Australian thing. I think. Yeah, it is. Sorry. Yeah. Josh, uh, any any or more personal details? Or do you have do you have do you have children, Josh? Uh, no children, no. No children. Okay. I do know that you built your own guitar that you're playing tonight. So that's a nice little tidbit of inside information that not everybody knows. Mm, yeah, that's actually one of the very first guitars I ever built, and uh, yeah, still using it. It sounds good. It sounds really good. You can't um, you can't blame anyone if you don't like the way it sounds that's the only downside of building it's, your own instrument yeah it's only me i build it i play it it's all my fault yeah well it sounds really good he, he has a number of guitars you've built i mean you've built an arch top electric thank you what a gentleman <laughs> <laughs> shocking shocking um so so let's just touch briefly on the whole family career touring thing so 
six kids and uh, and a and a house full of guitar um, woodworking tools and clamps and such. How do you how do you manage the family touring career thing? Did you take a break? Have you been touring the whole time, or did you take any time off in the last since we've seen you? I think we took two years off. Was the longest we'd taken, and then we realized that you know that wasn't going to fly for us. It was in our blood. It was something we had to get yeah. back to. Um, we we didn't. Sometimes I'm going to say too much now. Now I'm thinking about everything, but <laughs> <laughs> we weren't the best housewives um, <laughs> ever until we get on the road. It's it's a great yeah. job. I love being a mum. It's my favourite thing. It's the most challenging thing I've done. But I I'm, I love the fact that I get to leave sometimes yeah. and go on tour. <laughs> yeah. And I was telling you, Nick, today is my children's first day. At, at a new school in yeah. a new country and I wasn't able to be there, but, um, but they, they been, understand. They, they've been homeschooled up until now. Yes. Yeah, and today's their first day of going to a proper school. Yeah, and they're, and they're 13 and 14, so it, yeah. it, it was a big deal. And I got a text in the middle of the night, I'm so nervous, I'm so anxious. And uh, so I'm feeling I'm carrying a little bit of that oh, with me and that's, that's part of what we do. You know, the yeah. families stay behind now and um, that's we love we... them from afar and they, they I think... You know, they definitely appreciate that they're mothers and, you know, are out doing what we love to do. Yeah. And today's my daughter's birthday, or one of my daughters. I have three daughters. What today's her birthday, my youngest daughter. Nice. Yeah, and you're here? And where is she? She's actually here. She's here oh, in great. Colorado, yeah. She's not here tonight, <laughs> oh, but okay. she's here. She's working, but she's, she turned 36 today, so. 36. A little imagine. tiny, my tiny little baby. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> she's six foot two. <laughs> the wee one. We call her. You know, we, we talk about sometimes the, the last the last moment that your kids are ever gonna you know come and see you in the morning when they first get out of bed, or the last time they're gonna ask you, you know, to fetch something for them, and you just never know when that's gonna be. But I feel like it's coming up with teenagers. That listen, I think it's I think it's amazing that um, you as as a parent can share with your children how it is you've chosen to walk in this world. And a lot of people go to work and then they come home and their kids don't know what happens when they go to work. They just go away and then they come back and then they go to the grocery store or whatever. So it's, it's really cool and it's rare that you've been able to be with them for this many years and to school them and hang out with them and leave, let them, let them miss you from time to time. That's important too. <laughs> Hey, um, in case you just tuned in, you're listening to just some wild ramble about family details <laughs> that nobody really knows about. We're talking with the Waifs from Australia. You're listening to E-Town. Um, we're going we're gonna to touch on the fact that uh, you guys made a, made a record to celebrate your 25th anniversary. And um, Josh, I mentioned that it was recorded at your place in New South Wales. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And it was, it was and perhaps still is under construction? I don't think it's really progressed too much since we made the record. <laughs> Was it like a, was it framed in? Did it have a roof? Oh, yeah, it was a lock-up stage. Okay. Yeah. His so. house is incredible. It's not, I'm sorry I'm going to butt in here because you won't say anything, but he, he's built almost this, I mean, it, it's, it's unbelievable. Kind of like this, right? Yeah, it's like a church. It looks, it's got these huge ceilings and, and he will stop to build someone a guitar and then, you know, the kitchen still isn't done, but, but he had to stop and build an amphitheater <laughs> in the backyard for <laughs> concerts. But it's incredible, all hand stonework. Sorry, go on. Well, I think I actually figured I don't have a kitchen, but I want to start growing my own food. So I kind of put down the inside work and went out and did some landscaping, put some garden beds in, planted some food, and um, I'm cooking in my yeah. temporary kitchen and loving it. Yeah. Can we say, fire up the Barbie? <laughs> is, is that what's going on over there? No. Um, that's a reasonable sorry. attempt. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> You know that one. <laughs> is, 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 there, is there a barbecue? It's going to come back round to the shrimp in a minute. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? <laughs> no, no, no shrimp on my Barbie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> There's no shrimp on my Barbie. That's going to be the that's going to be the T-shirt from this show. <laughs> um, so listen, there, there's that's a, actually a good T-shirt. This that would be a good T-shirt for you guys. It's a good merch yeah. T-shirt. Yeah. You could you could move some merch if you had that thing. Um, <laughs> Listen, there are a lot of new songs on your record, 25 songs. And the way I understood it, you were thinking you were going to just do some covers and a few originals, but then you just kept writing songs. I don't think we knew what we were going to do. No, we, we'd, sort of, we'd set aside three weeks and um, we just came in with song ideas. We actually don't write together. Uh, Donna, Josh and I write the songs uh, and the skeletons of the songs and then bring them to each other. But... 
Well, we really don't finish each other's songs. It's rare that we collaborate beyond, you know, the finished product on a record, right? Yeah, I think, I think what happens is, you know, someone brings a song and after playing for so many years together, you have this instinctive sense of, well, that's what I would do. That's obviously what I would do. And even when I write a song, I can kind of hear what the girls are going to add to it. Yeah. And we sit down together and you play it for the first time and then we all just kind of figure out our place and it comes together just the way it's meant to be. And, and on this record, uh, Ironbark, there is a number of songs that are two or three takes and it's the first two or three times we've ever played them and they made it on the record because Amazing. it was such a yeah. relaxed vibe, you know, it's so intuitive with, with Dave and Ben here have been playing with us for about 23 years now and um, wow. everything just comes together so beautifully. Yeah, and so you recorded it in your house, just set up some microphones and yeah. had a way to record it and, and just said hey let's try this and yeah 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 you know the studio thing has never been the most comfortable environment for us right. and and you know paying for the time and and things like that and right. you know i hear a lot of those records and i can hear that things are a little rushed that they don't have the same right. thought and this album felt so different to record to us yeah. we we had an open-ended and shoes were optional yeah shoes were you clothes optional clothes oh. yeah <laughs> Okay, we're veering into another personal <laughs> chapter here. Um, but that's, I mean, it, it, is, it is remarkable that, first of all, it started with, with you and Donna just as siblings growing up together and, and then starting as you did, just the two of you um, singing songs. And, and um, I read somewhere that, that Donna recently discovered her, her teenage diary. And in it, there was sort of a roadmap for her career, including signing and practicing her autograph because she knew even at 15 that she was going to be signing autographs. It was like very, very, you know, forward thinking. <laughs> she she, she always mind, states she a... too that, you know, we had a, a Bob Dylan songbook in, in a caravan on a fishing camp and yeah. she always says that, you know, in her head she knew that one day she was going to play with Bob Dylan, you know, which That's is so I, I'm sure many, many teenagers or people starting out have that idea it just so happened that well sh yeah you guys pulled it off De yeah <laughs> Des you actually you made it happen well you you know you wonder if you have that thought and you hang on to that and you know does that i think that's powerful that i think that's absolutely powerful i yeah. think having a vision and having some determination and holding on to that vision is a is a sure path to something being manifested i think it's cool Anyway, um, there's lots more and much more personal details we could get into, <laughs> but we're instead going to get back to music. Uh, is is there? I, I saw that you're on tour. You're playing a lot of places, and many many places are sold out. They're adding second shows. Um, it must feel great to still be able to be out there and with with new music and and get out there and play new places and familiar places. Yeah, it is really such an honor, you know, to be able to just do this. We, we've we've done it for so long and. Um, yeah, we're kind of overwhelmed, I think, a lot of the time. We haven't been back here for a while and the response is so positive and people are still loving what yeah. we do. And, uh, you know, I was just sitting downstairs before coming on here and just feeling kind of overwhelmed with gratitude for this opportunity. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic thing that you guys do here, beautiful people that do it. And um, it's such a privilege to be a part of, of this tonight. So Thanks, Josh. We're Thanks doing what we love in a context we love to do it. So yeah. thank you. Thank you. Glad you're here. Let's get back to music. Welcome back, if you would, The Wakes. Hi, this is Nick Forster from E-Town. If you want to stay up to date with all the performances, interviews, and behind the scenes footage, click the subscribe button. Thanks. <laughs>